Lupin III, The Castle of Cagliostro is not a Studio Ghibli film, but it does mark the official directorial debut of legendary animator Hayao Miyazaki. The man had directed several TV shows, but usually with a colleague. Cagliostro was his first attempt at directing a feature film solo. That very reason is why this movie has a large cult following to this day. Fans are curious to see where the man's directorial career began. The movie wasn't a financial success when it first premiered, but it did grow in popularity during numerous re-releases. It's obviously not remembered as a classic like Spirited Away or My Neighbor Totoro, but does that make it a bad film on its own? I'll give you my thoughts, but first, I'll look back into the history of Lupin III himself. Kazuhiko Kato was born on May 26, 1937, in the town of Hamanaka. Even at a young age, he had promising skills and passion for drawing. As a kid, he was already getting pictures published in children's magazines, and in junior high school, was publishing manga strips in the school newspaper. Finally, in 1965, Kato was hired on by the Japanese publishing company Futabasha and began writing for Playboy School magazine under the pen name Eiji Gamuda. One day, the editor of the magazine suggested that Kato create a new manga under the pen name Monkey Punch. Kato hated the name, but this was only meant to be a temporary gig. He figured he could put up with it for three months. What he crafted in that time, though, would become his signature work and bind him to the name for the rest of his life. Lupin the Third. Cato was quite fond of a series of novels from French author Maurice Leblanc. The stories focused on a gentleman thief named Arsène Lupin, who was first published in 1905. Readers became immersed by these reverse detective stories, reading in amazement about how Lupin would outwit the authorities, take on other criminals, and find himself on several adventures to find lost treasure. Kazuhiko Kato decided to make his main character a direct descendant of the French thief, Arsène Lupin III, a character who follows in his ancestors' footsteps while also having the womanizing charm of James Bond. I haven't read the manga, but if you're not familiar with Lupin III, from what I've gathered, it's a series of adventures focusing on Lupin and the new allies and enemies that he meets along the way. There's an expert marksman named Daisuke Jigen, who often remained in the shadows until he was needed. There is Goimon Ishikawa the 13th, a master swordsman who becomes an enemy of Lupin's after the thief tries to steal from his clan, but eventually decides to become a member of Lupin's crew later on. And then there's Fujiko Mine, a man-eater and Lupin's main on-again, off-again love interest. Along his adventures, Lupin is also constantly pursued by Inspector Koichi Zenigata of the International Police, who has made it his lifelong mission to put Lupin behind bars. Lupin III was first published in 1967, and the manga became a surprising smash hit, receiving mixed reviews on the artwork, but praise for its adult themes, writing, and comedy. Eventually, the manga caught the attention of the animation company Tokyo Movie Shinsha. The company was interested in adapting the manga to television, but they lacked the financial resources to produce the show on their own. So, the team made a pilot film to pitch to possible investors. Many backers were attracted to the adult themes of violence and sexuality. The early episodes were directed by Masaki Osumi, and the series officially aired on October 24, 1971, but to poor ratings. Tokyo movie executives were worried and suggested dialing down the more adult aspects of the show in order to appeal to a wider audience. Masaki Osumi didn't like the idea and refused to comply. With that, Tokyo movie decided to let him go and began looking for a new director for the series. The show's animation director was a man named Yasu Osuka. When it was announced that Tokyo Movie was in search of a new director, two people came to Osuka's mind. Before being hired on at Tokyo Movie, he worked for Toei Animation in the 60s. While there, he met two up-and-coming talents who showed great promise in the industry. Their names were Hayao Miyazaki and Isao Takahata. 
if anyone could make the Lupin series appeal more to the general audience, Osuka believed that these two were the men for the job. At the time, Miyazaki and Takahata were currently employed at Shin Ai Animation, known back then as A Production, or A Pro for short. When they came on board to direct the Lupin series, they were credited together as A Production Director's Team. This series would be Miyazaki's first time ever in the director's chair. After the series was concluded the following year, Miyazaki and Takahata moved on to their next project. But obviously, Miyazaki wasn't finished with the series just yet. Lupin's popularity continued to rise throughout the 70s. A live-action movie came out in 1974, a second TV series began its run in 77, and an animated feature film was released in 78, with Yasu Osuka as director, self-titled Lupin the Third. Later on, the title was changed to Lupin the Third, The Mystery of Mamo. Due to the box office success of the film, production began for a follow-up movie. Tokyo Movie turned to Miyazaki to take the helm. After 20 years in the business, this was Miyazaki's chance to show that he was ready to direct a movie on his own. The movie was loosely based on the Maurice LeBlanc serial The Countess of Cagliostro from 1923, which introduced Arsene Lupin's most famous foe and lover, Josephine Balsamo the fictional granddaughter of Italian conman Giuseppe Balsamo, also known under the alias Count Alessandro di Cagliostro. Miyazaki even took the name of the heroine of the novel, Clarice, and gave it to his movie's damsel. Finally, Lupin III, The Castle of Cagliostro, was released in 1979. The film begins with Lupin and Jigen robbing a casino, only to discover that their so-called winnings are actually counterfeit. The two of them decide to track down the source, and their journey leads them to the small country of Cagliostro, where they discover that the evil Count Lazar is arranged to marry the young lady Clarice and reunite the divided Cagliostro family. But of course, Count Lazar has other intentions rather than restoring the family name. Now it's up to Lupin and his team to stop the wedding and uncover the mystery of the Cagliostro castle before it's too late. As for the English dubs of this movie, there's actually two of them. The one I'm familiar with is the Streamline dub from 1992, where Lupin is voiced by veteran voice actor Bob Bergen. Bergen would also voice Lupin in a couple of other English dubs, and would later go on to provide voices for the English dubs of several Ghibli films. It's a pretty good rendition, but a friend of mine who is an anime fan has told me that the anime's English dub from 2000 is better written and more faithful to the Japanese dialogue. I have seen the Japanese dubbed version, so I can easily say, yes, it is better written than the streamlined version. Overall, The Castle of Cagliostro is a fun movie. I get immersed in it every time I watch it. In fact, I'm ashamed to admit it, but I actually watch this movie more often than My Neighbor Totoro. Don't judge me. The car chase sequence alone is the most iconic moment in the entire film, and single-handedly made a star out of the 1957 Fiat 500, an actual car made in Italy. Yasu Osuka owned one, and since the Lupin series had such a big following in the country, Osuka wanted to reward their Italian fans by having Lupin drive the classic car as well. Since Cagliostro, the car has become Lupin's signature vehicle, making appearances in both television and movies thereafter. I also love the moments inside the castle. The thing is built like a Chinese puzzle box, so you never know what's around every corner. And a few of the surprises do lead to some pretty funny moments. For someone who's not familiar with Lupin the Third all that much, I think this movie is a wonderful introduction to the series. Because, for many Miyazaki fans, including myself, The Castle of Cagliostro was our first taste of the Lupin franchise. I can't say whether or not this is the best adaptation of the character, in fact I highly doubt it, but it is the most famous adaptation due to the popularity of its director. If it wasn't for Miyazaki's reputation, this movie and the series probably would have gone under my radar. Actual Lupin the Third fans, however, have stated that Miyazaki's version of the protagonist is tame, compared to the ruthlessness of the character from the manga and other adaptations. 
Even the creator, Kazuhiko Kato, complimented Cagliostro, calling it a, quote, excellent movie, but commented it that Miyazaki's portrayal of the character strayed too far from his own original. In fact, in 1994, Kato went on record stating that the episodes directed by Masaki Osumi were ironically the best adaptations of his characters. To Kato, Miyazaki's version was just too nice. If it were up to him, he said that he would let Lupin have his way with Clarice before even considering rescuing her. To me though, since most people begin their Lupin experience with this film, it seems better to start with a more friendly version of the character before diving into the more adult aspects of the franchise. But that said, I do have some issues of my own. In terms of the overall story, I suspect that Miyazaki didn't really know what to do with some of the main characters. This is a Lupin the Third movie. There are certain expectations that the audience is going to have. There is no way that the fans would have been satisfied if just one of the main characters was left on the sidelines. So Miyazaki and his team somehow had to find a way to incorporate all five characters into the film. But even then, there were some times where I would completely forget that some of the characters were even in the movie. Jigen plays more of a key role in the first third, but as the movie goes along, he begins to take more and more of a back seat. Characters like Fujiko and Inspector Zenigata seem to pull their weight pretty well. I actually thought they were well balanced. But the real throwaway character to me is Goimon. In the context of the movie, the only explanation I can think of as to why he was called in was to provide some extra muscle just after Lupin and Jigen barely survive a surprise attack. But aside from that, he doesn't really do anything in this movie until the climax. All he does is just sit around while the rest of the characters do most of the work. My other issue with this movie can be seen as a nitpick, but in a way I still think it's relevant. The castle of Cagliostro seems to lack a certain magic that I often look for in Miyazaki's films. Having been a fan of his for years, there are certain expectations I have when seeing a movie of his for the first time. His animation, for example, and even for 1979, this is very impressive. But aside from that, there is nothing really in this movie that I would connect with a traditional Miyazaki production. I've always felt like it's missing something that often makes his movies so powerful. Every Miyazaki movie has a certain charm that comes straight from the man's heart. I don't think he was really able to express himself in this movie as much as he wanted because he was limited to someone else's vision, someone else's universe. I'm not forgetting that this was Miyazaki's solo directorial debut, so he still needed to prove himself, and he may not have found his niche yet. But honestly, if you were to recommend one of Miyazaki's films to someone who is just starting their Miyazaki journey, would this be the first film you'd recommend? Probably not. I think this movie is always doomed to be compared to the rest of Miyazaki's classics in a critical way. But don't let that ruin your experience with this film. I still recommend it. One last thing that I should probably bring up are the copyright issues. Kazuhiku Kato never got permission to use the Arsene Lupin name from the LeBlanc estate, because at the time, the country of Japan did not enforce trade copyrights. But even when the LeBlanc estate finally came knocking, the name was already considered to be in common use. It wasn't the same story in America, though. To avoid legal issues, the streamlined version cut out any mention of the name Lupin. Instead, Lupin is referred to as the Wolf or just Wolf. Jigen even calls him boss from time to time, which is weird because in other adaptations, they were equal partners. So that's just an extra footnote in Lupin's history. So what happened afterwards? Well, Miyazaki's final contribution to the franchise was two episodes of the TV series in 1980, under the stage name Tsutomu Teruki. Kazuhiku Kato continued to illustrate Lupin and other projects until his death from pneumonia in 2019. As for the franchise itself, Lupin III continues on in television and movies to this day. Another live-action film attempt released in 2014 was financially successful but received mixed reviews. And in 2019, Lupin officially made a transition to computer animation. And though I haven't seen the movie, 
The animation does look very impressive and seems to stay true to the style of the series. But for many, the 1979 film The Castle of Cagliostro will always be the most notable work in Lupin III's history. I'm going to give Lupin III The Castle of Cagliostro four stars. Guys, thank you so much for continuing to watch my videos. It really means a lot to me. And stay tuned in May for my next Ghibli film, Porco Rosso. And if you like this, you can click here and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.